seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them. So everybody know God. Everybody love God. We don't need Moses and Aaron. We don't need preachers. We don't need overseers. We don't, I don't need a pastor or a prophet or an apostle or a teacher or to be accountable because we are holy. We are all the children of God. Yeah, so what you do is you find somebody who will validate your rebellion. This is a scripture about rebellion. Now, don't think it all strange because rebellion is in the earth and rebellion has been here since the Garden of Eden. Will you go with me now? It's been here since the Garden of Eden. God told Adam and Eve what to do and what not to do, and they rebelled. Satan, yes, put rebellion in their heart. So here it is. God is trying to move his people and bless his people. But everywhere God is trying to bless his people, the devil must come. You must understand that. There are no perfect groups of people, flocks of people, where the devil don't come. But what we have to learn is that God already got the answer to the problem. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. And the last thing we want to do is not expose the answer. To the problem. See, the enemy works in darkness. He, in other words, he like he said, oh, don't talk about that. Oh, don't talk about Talk about the good stuff. While he's shanking and, and, and planting and, and Korah and, and Dathan and all of them working. But what the word of God teaches us, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Amen. That's right. That's the ain't no new situation. Your situation ain't unique. Your problem ain't unique. Your habit ain't unique. Your way of moving ain't unique. Whether good or bad, nothing's new under the sun. And this book will show you a person or people when they get out of order, how they got out of order, and how to bring them back in order. Do you hear what I'm saying? There ain't no congregation that God simply said, I mean, I'm, I'm stretching here. There are not many congregations. God simply said that I can't fix it. There are not many homes that God say, I can't fix it. There's not many children that the, the God will say, we might not say any. The God will say, I can't fix it. Because this book will show you somebody who was contrary to the word of God. Whether it was multitudes of groups or just a few people. So when there's disorder, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit, his first job was to bring order order to chaos because the earth was void and without form and the spirit of God moved over that chaos when God was speaking the Holy Ghost was the one doing the work said let's bring order to this chaos and where we see disorder it means that the Holy Ghost is being grieved Amen. it don't matter who it come from but where he likes to start is with rebellion because that's one of Satan's initial workings. He rebelled in heaven. So all of us got a little rebel in us. Amen. We do. Amen. We got a little, I ain't going to take that. Or you, you don't know who you're talking about. I'll show you. We got a little of it in us. Amen. And we may as well admit that. That's why we go to God and say, lead me not into temptation and deliver me from evil. That's why we have to pray for others because in us, there is a little bit of, I got to have my way. Yeah. Every last one of us Amen. is in us. Don't fool yourself. Church is full of people that are all wearing flowered hats and, 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 and eating cake and cookies. It's got some people in there that want to have their way. Amen. And so what Satan wants to do is find a leader. Always find a leader. A lot of us have leadership skills. People are attracted to us because we are capable of leading and making influence. But Satan will punch the rebel button in us to create sometimes a diversion. And that's why a lot of people right now, they waiting on something, the troubling of the water. But the truth is, they know what to do. Amen. I may offend some people, but I don't mean to offend people. You know, when I say I don't care, I, I mean that, that I don't care that you're going to be stubborn. But then I really don't mean it because I go and pray for stubborn people. I have to. Because I've been stubborn. 
I don't care means that I'm not going to let your care, not caring, make me change my position in this scripture. It's called I won't compromise. That's what it really means. I'm not compromising. I don't care don't mean I don't love you. But God needs some preaching women and men that get I don't care in their spirit. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. Thus said the Lord. And if you read 1 Peter for a change, you will hear that you are called to be a witness and to suffer for your testimony. If your testimony, I just get a long bill and you can do it all and that's okay because the Lord love you. You know, I can't use you uh, if, if you're going to be that way. Somewhere, it got to grieve you like Jesus and, and the Holy Ghost got to say, open your mouth and declare. That's why a lot of people, you say, I know you want me to do something. You've been saying that for 10 years. The something is come to the place where you are saying, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, I'll do. Because people need to be saved. They don't need to be church. They need to be saved. They need to be saved from their sin. Their sin needs to be made known to them. Not to everybody, but to them. That if you don't get this out of your life, you're going to die and be lost forever. It ain't come join some group and let's eat cookies. And we're going to, it is, first of all, we are drawn together by one common thing, that we are all sinners. And if we don't get it together, we all going to hell. Every last one of us. There's not one, the Bible said. No, not one that is righteous. The only thing righteous about us is the Holy Ghost. So God don't need people who are afraid to talk about sin. Amen. That's Because right. when the day comes, sinners going to be running. Amen. Saying, preacher, what you know, how, how, can I, how can I make this right? Today is the day of salvation. Now look at the word. Here it is. The people are trying to be moved by God. But then a spirit of Korah gets on them. And Dathan with his crazy self and Abiram again in verse 3. They gather themselves again against Moses and against Aaron. A lot of people are out of church. I believe in church. I believe you ought to go to church. I believe everybody should go to church that love Jesus. I heard all your stories about you ain't got to go to church. You don't have to go to work either, but you ain't going to get paid. You, amen. You don't have to come home, but, you know, somebody might lock the door on you. Amen. There's a whole lot of stuff you ain't got to do, but there are some things you ought to do. And what you ought to do is find a church where they talk about sin. Get out of them churches that don't talk about sin. Amen. Amen. I'm not, I don't know who, you, who you're talking about, but we must talk about sin. Because sin is the disease that's going to get all of us in trouble if we don't get it dealt with. When God sent you out to speak about his love and the gospel and Jesus sent his, God sent his son, it's to pay for our sin. Because our God is so holy that he can't look upon sin. He killed his own son over some sin. Now, what do you say about a man that would kill his own son? He killed his own son because he looked at him and he saw sin on him. I know he sent him. But when he got that sin on him, he turned his back because God is holy. He said, I can't take no sin. I can't look at it. I can't stand it. But I love them people. I'm going to send them a redeemer. And he sent that redeemer and his name is Jesus. But don't you be dancing up before God with your sin, hollering about how much God loves you. It's only mercy that keep you from dying this year. Amen. You ain't got tomorrow to stop drinking. You ain't got tomorrow to stop. Uh, uh, I, I put it back up here. You ain't got till tomorrow. And that's the deception that somebody told you. So you didn't run into a real man of God today. Amen. And to God be the glory. But you ain't got the time to entertain evil spirits. You don't have the, uh, the freedom and the time to uh, be lustful and prostitution and anger and stubbornness. You ain't got that kind of time. Because tomorrow ain't promised to you. You can die. You, 
My granddaughter's 35-year-old mama died last month. 35 years old, you ain't nothing but a chicken. You just a spring chicken. You a kid, 35 years old. That ain't nothing. 35 years old, my mama died at 34. So you can die early. You ain't got time to be bitter and to be jealous and to be in unbelief and steal it and false religion. You ain't got that kind of time. I don't know who told you you can come when you want to, but I'm here to tell you that's a lie. You better find somebody to tell you better come now. Come now. Come now. Right now. Because that's the God that we serve. And the Bible is full of it. He says, today when you hear my heart. Jesus put it a whole other way. He says, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shall not tempt. The Lord thy God, Matthew 4 and 7. Now, what does that mean? That means don't do nothing, you know wrong, and then dance before God, he understands. God will let you die in your sin. And people are doing it every day. And it's the call of the preacher, Moses and Aaron, to say something and to pray something. That's our job. That's the preacher's job. And if you want to be in the ministry, you got to get that kind of backbone. That's right. Everything can't be about how good God is. He's going to take care of you. Some stuff he's saying, repent. Amen. Change. Amen. Hey, friend, we eat, drink coffee together, but change. Amen. Hey, girl, I know you like being with every kind of man, but baby, you got to change. Amen. Hey, daughter, I know you're my daughter, but you got to change. Hey, son. I know you're my son. You know mama love you. Daddy love you. But you got to change. And don't take it personal. Because the deal is that when the trumpet is sound, we want to see you. Amen. You ain't got but one chance. Come on now. Let's go to the book so we can go. It says in verse 4, Moses heard it and he fell on his face. He fell on his face. When Moses heard that Korah was, was round there telling the people, Y'all famous. Y'all anointed just like Moses. Y'all got the Holy Ghost. Who is he to tell, tell me what to do? Who is Aaron to tell me what to do? Who is he? Moses fell on his face. That's what we have to do. Nothing grieves us more than when the people rise up. And that's what's grieving God in heaven. The people all over the country in churches. They're just stubborn. And I'm not going to do nothing. And this and that. That's why everybody looking for a scandal on the man of God. God forgive us when we've fallen or when we have been gotten in the flesh. But they're looking for something on you too. And the one thing they're looking for is rebellion inside of you. Amen. Because they're looking for a reason to say, I, I'm a man just like you. That ain't the point. I'm a man like you. But we've been called and given authority. And those who are supposed to stand beside us are supposed to be willing also to stand with us. Amen. Errands to stand with us in the truth of God. I ain't got no friends if it, if it comes to this word. I ain't got no mama if it come to this word. Ask your savior. They say, hey, your mama and your brother out there, stop preaching, man. All that preaching, go out and be. But he said, who is my mother and my father or my son? But he that doeth the will of my father. And see, God can't use a lot of people because they won't come to that place. When you get saved, you got to be like Abraham. You got to come out of Tekor. Amen. You got to come out of your father's house. Come out of your country. Come away from your kindred. A lot of us wouldn't, wouldn't be able to take it if we had to move from America to go live in China. We don't understand these people who come here because we ain't never been nowhere but around the corner. But when you get saved, you got to come out of your father's country. Amen. Amen. To burn your plow. I don't care how good a man he is, how much you love him. Amen. He might be the preacher. You got to come out of his country and come to God's country. Amen. You got to renounce your own name. Y'all's familiar spirit. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Don't give me all that. My daddy was a drunk. That's why I drink. Okay. And those of us who drink know that the day come when you got to put that drink down. You got to decide whom you going to And you got everybody now saying you can drink and be a Christian. Go ahead. 
You can get some on the side too and be a Christian out here now too. You can lie and be a Christian. That's what I hear now. You can murder and be a Christian. That's what they're saying now. But believe it if you want to. You know why? Because God says that your temple belongs to him. Amen. He don't live in these buildings. He lives inside of men. Amen. He only lives in you to the degree you let his word live in you. You ain't listen to somebody talking to you that don't know the motions of sin. You got to let the word live in you. You got to be a tabernacle for the Holy Ghost. That's why we talk about holiness. Most of us who, who really understand because we were vile and we knew it. You get a revelation that you know what? I, I'm, I'm a sinner, man. I'm a sinner, sinner, sinner. And only God's grace can clean me up. That's why we ain't got time to play church and watch everybody. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I, the, the, the thing when the Lord was calling me back to the church, I'd been out in the world. I'd just come from London, England, partying down, getting down, having fun, doing it all. In my mind, my daddy was a pastor, but my mind was like, man, I'm hip. I'm good looking and I'm hip. The vanity of you. I'm 20 years old. Don't judge me. I'm strong. Straight body, muscled. I'm a party animal. I likes to party. That's what you do when you're in London, England. You party. Three years. When I came back to America, God called me, and the first thing he said, go back to church. I was like, I don't want to go to that church, nobody's church, because they too slow. That was my feeling. They too slow. Ain't a lot of people. It ain't fun. But what God had to deal with in me was the fact that it wasn't nothing wrong with the church. It was something wrong with me. I had so much pride inside of me. But only his spirit, if I would yield his spirit, he could save me from them habits I had. And I had every habit everybody else had. But I had to. He, he didn't send me to the big church where I could wear my nice clothes and look dapper. And everybody and say, hey, look at, the, look at the fly guy. He sent me to a place where he, I got clean quickly. Amen. When I say clean quickly, I wasn't there because it was just all that great. Amen. But the Holy Ghost said, I got something for somebody to do. If you don't stop right here today, somebody, you might get your chance and die like the rest of your friends, dying in drugs, dry, dying in the street, dying in the party, dying in a, a car because they've been drinking, dying in old jacked up women, old jacked up men, hanging with them all the time. But you better stop now. And I heard that voice. I sat right there on the front row. I tell you, this is my testimony. And I was watching the preacher. I'll never forget this. And, 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 and don't, don't judge me. But I started, my, my cheeks started moving. I, and it was the evil spirit inside of me as I looked at the preacher, Reverend David Rice. And the Lord said, you got a dog in you. Evil is a spirit. And when God was trying to get it out, stubbornness was just snarling at the preacher. It was a demon. Jesus came to save you because before he saved you, you're overrun with demons, Amen. demonic spirits. And he knew to replace them drugs I had been doing. That hash and that purple haze and all of that stuff. Amen. I can't talk about all of it. To replace that. Couldn't just have a few folks sitting in church that didn't have power. Amen. You had to have the Holy Spirit come on and cleanse that temple. Amen. Cleanse me. From that evil spirit in me. And I'm a witness. I'm telling you. 
that the day I got a revelation that was an evil spirit in me was the day I was looking at the preacher snarling. He didn't say nothing. I didn't fall out and they take me out or nothing. But I remember specifically I was looking at him snarling. And I knew this man. He was a God-fearing man. But that demonic force inside of me didn't want to come out. Well, let me tell you, that ain't just for sinners like me. That's for anybody who decide they want to have their own way. It's a demonic spirit. Amen. It's rebellion. Amen. And thank God, Reverend Levi King had the anointing of the Holy Ghost and wasn't afraid and wasn't on some kind of salary that he was trying to be nice and preach the word and it convicted me. If you don't ever get convicted by the word, why do you go to hear the word? The word is supposed to convict you at times. Don't take it personal. Should make you when you go home want to do better. Amen. So Moses found these people and they've been fed by another spirit telling them to rebel against God's order. It ain't that Moses was a big shot or Aaron was a big shot. God knows that people need a certain order. Amen. And the Bible says, let's look at it. I'm going to hurry again. I've said that. Moses heard it. He fell on his face. And he spake unto Korah and to his company, I'm in verse 4, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he have chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take you senses, Korah, and all his company. Put some fire in it. Put some incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. Moses had to say to him, y'all taking too much on yourself. Hollering about me and Aaron. Hollering about who Moses is. He think he a lord over us. He ain't nobody. Everybody that's saying that. Oh, no, they ain't nobody. You taking too much on yourself. Because the Lord has a way that he will vindicate. Amen. And it's only his mercy that allow you to breathe, keep breathing. Because God don't play with his anointing. Now listen, I'm not saying this to try to get you to fear me. I'm not saying this to get you to fear anybody. I'm saying that God has said it that the people in the world need to come to a certain understanding. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach unless he be sent? And that means somebody got to humble themselves when they hear the preacher. And they can't listen to the chorus telling, he can't tell me nothing. He got a son that's this. He got, that ain't got nothing to do with you, busybody. What my son, what my daughter, what my cousin doing, hear ye the word of the Lord. And a lot of people cannot move because they too busy trying to analyze the preacher's wife. Trying to analyze the preacher's car. How did he get? That ain't got nothing to do. What I drive. What the preacher drive. What he live. What you should be paying attention to. That when you act a fool, he get on his face for you. Amen. Amen. And that's how Korah and Abiram and Dathan have got all these people off. God is saying, oh ye, hear the word of the Lord. And now they want to talk about his family, talk about his wife, talk about the church, talk about this and that. That ain't got nothing to do with your eternal salvation. Whether we had carpet on the floor or air conditioning, hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. And there was a time when we went out of our way to do that. But all them big coliseums that set 30 and 40,000 people, they empty now. Amen. You know why? Because the Lord is coming soon. And he's coming back for a few. I'm going to tell you this if you hadn't heard it. The way to hell, my sister, is broad. The way to heaven is narrow. You better find somebody that you trust to tell you that. And you better believe that. It's not broad to heaven. Everybody ain't going to heaven. Everybody ain't going to heaven. And I got some old news for you. Some people we know ain't going to heaven. Yeah. Right. That hurts. Right. I'm not to judge. 
You're not to judge. But everybody ain't going to heaven. Amen. Only the righteous Amen. Amen. <laughs> shall see God. Now you figure what that is. Your life is nothing but a vapor. Amen. Steam off a cup of coffee. I don't care if you live to be a just nothing to God. Amen. Right. But today is your day. Amen. Look at this word. He says in verse number uh, 8, Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray ye sons of Levi, see me but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. My God, this is so rich. So many have went and started churches just because they could not, they could not work with someone else. And this is what Moses is saying. Now, the Lord didn't call you to be leaders in the congregation. See, the danger about being a leader, dangers about being a leader and being under a leader is that the enemy always tries to find a way to make you feel that you can do better than the leader. I don't care if you at work. And somebody else is supervising you. At some point, you're going to be thinking, how she get the job? I could do better. See, the danger of being in charge, of being the one, God's go-to person. Everybody think it's glory. No, no, no. You are setting yourself up for everybody to talk about you. And here Moses and Aaron are being talked about simply because they obeyed God. And the people come and they said, well, you ain't nobody, you know, you just like us. Yeah. And that's the danger. See, so think about it when they promote you and say, we're going to promote you and you're going to have people working for you. Get ready to be talked about every day. Oh, yeah. The money is good, better, I guess, but get ready. If you're just doing it so you can be looking down your nose, you need to leave that alone. Because these people will call and tell you they puppy sick and they can't come in today. The 